This video is sponsored by Card Kingdom. You can visit their store by using my referral link in the description below. Hi everyone, I'm Nita Hone, and today is Monday, and that means it's time for another MTG Top 10, the series where I rank cards based on their historical performance at Magic's highest level of competition. Today, we're going to take a look at 6-5 creatures. I've looked at many stat lines in the almost 600 episodes of this series, but 6-5 is one that I still haven't done, and it seemed like a good time to do it because today is June 5th. In the United States, we write that date as 6-5. A 6-5 creature is pretty beefy. So if it is costed efficiently and comes with some nice effects, it is the type of creature that can utterly dominate a game. To be eligible for this list, a card had to have 6 power and 5 toughness. In all, there were 87 cards eligible for this video, and in it we'll look at the 10 that have left the biggest impact on competitive magic. Before we get started, here's a quick reminder on how I score cards in these videos. A first tier top 8 is worth 2 points, this includes events like Pro Tours. A second tier top eight is worth one point, and this includes events like regional championships. All right, let's take a look at Magic's top 10 six fives. At number 10, it is Crows and Tusker. When in play, this is a vanilla seven mana six five. That is not good, but luckily it isn't the only mode this card has. You can also cycle it for two generic and a green, and when you do, you search your library for a basic land and you put it into your hand. This means that cycling this actually gives you a two for one because you also get to draw a card. That mode is definitely the most powerful one, but the fact that this can also be a 6-5 body when you need it is nice. It was played in ramp decks in Block Constructed, and in Standard, it was played in the cycling-focused Astral Slide deck, which could generate even more value out of the Tusker's powerful cycling ability. It doesn't have any points since rotating out of Standard, so its spot on this list is definitely in danger. At number 9, it is Perforos, God of the Forge. This 6-5 only costs 4 mana, and it comes with indestructibility. It also does 2 damage to your opponent every time you have a creature enter the battlefield under your control, and it can buff your whole board for 2 generic and a red. Of course, like the other Theros gods, it isn't always a creature. Your devotion to red has to get to 5 or higher for its 6-5 body to actually matter. The good news is, even when he's not a creature, he is a big problem for your opponent. The whole package makes Perforos a great card for aggressive red decks, especially if you're able to put multiple bodies into play every turn, as the damage Perforos does quickly adds up. Unsurprisingly, he was played in red aggro decks in both block and standard, but he doesn't have any points since 2015. And number 8 it is Thassa, Deep Dwelling. Like Perforos, Thassa is a 4 mana 6-5 with indestructibility that needs 5 devotion to be a creature. It also lets you blink a creature during each of your insteps, and for 4 mana, you can also tap down creatures. Her ability to blink creatures is what decks are most interested in abusing, since there are many creatures that deliver insane value if you're able to blink them every single turn. While she hasn't exactly been a multi-format all-star, she has seen play in Standard, Modern, and Pioneer. In Standard and Pioneer, she was generally played in Yorion decks, which were loaded up with good blink targets. Her one point in Modern came in a Soul Herder deck, which could get even more value out of its ability to blink things. She doesn't have any points since 2021, but I wouldn't count her out entirely just yet. At number 7, it is Rorix Bladewing. This 6 mana 6 5 comes with flying and haste, which means it can present a very quick clock on your opponent. It hits hard, it's hard to block, and it attacks the turn it comes down. It was played in a wide variety of red decks in block, standard, and extended. In block, it was nice top curve for goblin aggro decks. In standard, it was one of the main win conditions for red land destruction decks. And in extended, it was played in reanimator. While it was heavily played between 2003 and 2005, Rorix has long since been eclipsed by better win conditions in reanimation targets and is unlikely to gain more points in the future. At number 6, it is Dragon Lord Kolagon, a card which does a good job of illustrating the kind of dragon you can get with 6 mana these days compared to Rorik's Bladewing. Kolagon is of course a 6-5 and he comes with flying and haste like Rorix, but it also gives haste to all of your other creatures and it harshly punishes opponents for casting a creature or planeswalker that they already have a copy of in the graveyard inflicting a whopping 10 damage any time that happens. It didn't see a whole lot of play in Standard, but it has seen significant play elsewhere. In Vintage, it's a pretty good sideboard card against that format's graveyard decks, and in Legacy and Pioneer, it sees play in Gyruda decks. With Dragonlord Kolagon, one of the spicier things you can hit with Gyruda's Enter the Battlefield trigger. If you do, that means you can attack with both Kolagon and Gyruda right away. While Kolagon has never really been heavily played anywhere, it does see sporadic play in multiple formats, picking up at least one one point every year since 2015, so it has a good chance of sticking around on the list. 
At number five, it is Xenagos, God of Revels, the third Theros God to make the list. This five mana 6-5 comes with indestructibility and becomes a creature when your combined devotion to red and green is seven or higher. At the beginning of combat on your turn, Xenagos offers a huge buff to one of your creatures. It gives that creature haste and plus X plus X until end of turn, where X is that creature's power. This effectively makes every creature you play into a much, much scarier threat that can attack immediately. In standard, it was played in Jund and Gruul aggro decks. More recently, Xenagos has become a really important card in Pioneer, where it's part of the combo win for Indomitable Creativity decks. These decks only play two actual creatures, World Spine Worm and Xenagos. This means that you can target two permanents with creativity, and you'll always get the pair of them. Then you go to combat and target the worm with Xenagos' creature enhancing effect, which allows you to attack with a 30-30 trampler, at which point the game is almost always over. Xenagos is going to keep gaining points in Pioneer going forward. And number four is Colossal Sky Turtle, which is kind of similar to our number 10 card, Crows and Tusker, in that you can cast it as a creature, but you can also pay some mana and discard it for an effect. In this case, you can cast it as a seven mana 6-5 with Flying in Ward 2, but you can also channel it. If you pay two generic and a green, you can return a card from your graveyard to your hand, and if you pay one generic and a blue, it can bounce a creature. It's gained all of its points in Modern Living Index, which are all about getting creatures in the graveyard, ahead of casting the Powerful Sorcery, which gets rid of all creatures in play and puts all creatures from the graveyard on the battlefield. The Sky Turtle works great there, because it comes with a built-in way to discard it that gives you extra value, and once it comes back, it can end the game in a hurry. As long as Living Index are a thing in Modern, the Turtle is going to keep gaining points. At number three, it is Keranos, God of Storms, giving us the fourth god from the Plane of Theros to make the list. I didn't realize until I made this video that so many of them are six fives. You learn something new every day. Anyway, Keranos is a five mana indestructible six five, but of course it needs seven devotion to actually be a creature. It gives you a great effect when you draw your first card each turn. You reveal that card, and if it's a land, you get to draw another card. And if it's a non-land, you get to do three damage to any target. Both of those are really great and means you get a two for one every time you draw your card during your draw step, which is pretty insane. It's awesome play in Jeskai Tempo decks in Standard and in Modern, it used to be a frequent sideboard card for Splinter Twin combo decks. Sometimes Twin decks had to side into being more traditional control decks and siding in a win condition that wasn't the Twin combo, like Karanos, did a pretty good job for them. Twin got banned, of course, in 2015 and since then Karanos hasn't managed any points in the format, but it has recently started to see some play in Pioneer is it control decks, so maybe it's going to gain more points in the future. At number two, it is Cavalier of Flame. This six mana six five can give plus one plus zero and haste to your whole board for one generic and a red. When it enters the battlefield, you can also discard any number of cards and draw that many cards. And when it dies, it deals X damage to each opponent and planeswalkers they control, where X is the number of lands in your graveyard. Obviously, you can set up the death trigger quite nicely with the enter the battlefield ability. The Cavalier has gained all of its points in Standard and Pioneer Fires Up Invention decks where it's a great fit. Once you have that powerful enchantment in play, you don't really have anything to use your mana on, so you can sink all of it into the Cavalier's ability. This often means you can play it and use its ability to buff the whole board and give it haste, including itself. It's likely to keep gaining points in Pioneer going forward, but it has basically no chance of ever catching the number one card on the list, which is... Sky Sovereign Console Flagship. As a vehicle, it isn't always a creature. It only becomes one until end of turn when you crew it by tapping any number of creatures with a combined three or more power. When you do that, it becomes a 6-5 flyer. When it enters a battlefield or attacks, you can do three damage to a creature or planeswalker. That means even if your opponent can kill it right away, you're going to get some value out of it immediately, and if it's stuck around, well, the game is pretty much over in your favor. All of that power made it a heavily played card in Standard, where it appeared in vehicle-centric decks, but it showed up as a one-of or a sideboard card in a whole lot of other creature-based decks, too. It has found a ton of success in other formats, too, including in Pioneer's Devotion to Green and Grease Fang decks, Modern Eldrazi Tron, Legacy Mystic Forge, and Vintage Shops. It's going to keep gaining points going forward, and I don't think any other 6-5 will be passing it anytime soon. So, those are the top 10 six fives in Magic. If you want to get your hands on any of these creatures, check out the description where you can find a direct Card Kingdom link for each card that appeared in the video. If you enjoyed this video, please like it and share it so that others can enjoy it too. If you want to catch future MTG Top 10s, don't forget to subscribe. If you want to catch up on the over 590 other MTG Top 10s, you should see a playlist on your screen shortly. Thanks for watching.